What we're going to do here is we're going to find the change in volume dV or in surface area dA, and we're going to use um, dV being a differential. So our formula that we have is the dV is going to equal the derivative of V times dx, or whatever our input variable will be. So this is our um, differential formula. All right, the thing is uh, for the cube is that we do need to know the formula for the uh, volume of a cube, which is something that I think we can just figure out without really memorizing anything. Um, but it seems I'm getting caught up in drawing the picture of what a cube looks like. Okay, so, all right, so the dimensions of a cube, since they all have the same lengths for the size, are x by x by x, and the volume is just found by multiplying those. So the volume is x cubed, and so for, when we find the differential, we take, it's, it's going to be dv times the derivative x cubed, which is 3x squared dx. So I'm using the formula here. The dv is v prime of x dx. So that gives us our differential formula. I'll just highlight that. And then, um, okay, the, 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 we're going to put in x equals 10 because that's our starting point for x. And then dx is our change from 10 to 10.1, which is 0.1. So we simply put all those things in there and we get three times 10 squared, and this is 0.1. And, well, then it's up to me to get this wrong by multiplying this wrong, but um, this is 300 times 0.1, which is 30. And that'll be uh, 30, doesn't give the units, so just 30. So um, what we can think about this as is saying that if you have a small change of x, then you multiply it by the rate of change, but the, the rate of change exactly when x is 10. I mean, the, the rate of change will change, or will not be constant through the interval from 10 to 10.1, but we just take the small change of x, 0.1, and we multiply it by the rate of change at x equals 10, and we get an approximation for the ch change in v. All right. Now, the next one is similar to the same idea, except there is a formula that we have to know, which I don't know if that really pops into everyone's head, which is the formula for um, the volume of a sphere. So I would say that you'd have to be, you know, sort of a math student or engineering student to, to spend the time to have memorize this formula. But even still, maybe you wouldn't. But anyway, you can look it up. So um, we're looking at the change in volume. So again, using the differential formula, we have dv is the derivative, which is 4 thirds pi r squared times dr. Now, the, the formula will be above, I have dx, but the input variable is r in this case. So in other words, dv equals 4. Oops, well, that's the problem is I wrote this down wrong. The derivative of r cubed is 3r squared, and the 3 cancel out, so I get 4 pi r squared dr. Okay, now I have that, and then I'm going to put in... Um, oh, anyway, I'm going to put in... Uh, the, the, the radius of a sphere changes from r by dr, so isn't that the answer then? Okay, I already have that then. Um, you could write this as... Anyway, I think that's it. Okay. So, all right, let's check this out. So here we have a circular cylinder. So the circular cylinder is, well, just wasting time in drawing it, but let's do it anyway, because it's fun to draw pictures sometimes. Or maybe not in this case, hold on. Can I do it? Barely figuring that out. Okay. 
Well, maybe I won't use the computer. I'll just do it by hand. But um, what is going on here? Okay, I'll duplicate this again. Oh, well, is that really what's going to stop me from doing this problem is drawing the picture? Something like that. Okay, well, anyway, um, here's the height. And, um, and here's R, and R equals 3. So the volume formula is, it's, it's, it's the base, which is pi R squared, times the height. But in this case, the base is 2. So volume equals 4 pi, um, no, okay, sorry, the, the height is 3, so it's going to be pi r squared of height 3, so we're going to get 3 pi r squared, all right, so that's the volume of this um, cylinder, this circular cylinder. In fact, I'm going to replace H by just writing 3 here. Okay, then we find the, the differential. So it's dV equals the derivative of 3 pi r squared, which is 6 pi r dr. So that's our differential. And then I'm going to put in r equals 2 and then dr is 1.9 minus 2, which is negative 0.1. So r is shrinking by, by um, point negative, shrinking by 0.1. So dr is negative 0.1. So we have dv equals 6 pi times 2 times negative 0.1. So 6 times 2 is 12 times 0.1 makes 1.2 pi, and then don't forget the negative. And then, you know, of course, you could put that in your calculator. Um, or, you know, you can approximate pi by as many decimal places as you think that you should. So, all right. So overall, what's going on here? We have our formula. And the formula I'm using over and over. In this case, the formula is dv equals v prime dr. That was both of these. So what was required is that I had to take the derivative and then I had to put the numbers in there. Well, um, for the cylinder, well, you had to know the formula for the cylinder and then make sure you put h is 3. The for formula for the volume, same with the, for the sphere, if you have that, that um, formula. But otherwise, it's just pretty much plugging in numbers. All right, this is from OpenStax. You can look up these problems there, and you can look up the answers. All right, that's all.